morning. Welcome to day 69 of the 100 day project. This is day 68. Video's up and you're welcome to watch. And this is day 67. I was going to work on a big swatch book today, but I was doing a little research, trying to figure out what categories I wanted, what information I wanted in each category. And man, I didn't realize it was such a big thing. <laughs> I mean, this big swatch book that I wanna make, and I, I say big, I just mean large, not small. I want it to be simple and basic because I'm pretty simple, I'm pretty basic. I don't do a lot of in-depth color theory and all that kind of stuff. But I would like some information about the products I use in my book and I want to set it up in a way that's convenient to me, simple, something very easy to understand. The more research I did, the more detailed it seemed to get. And I mean, people are setting these things up as like bullet journals. I've never even done that before because I barely know the date as it is and I don't even really look at a calendar anymore. <laughs> so. Anyway, I was just thinking I'm not going to tackle that today. I may not tackle it during the 100 day project because I'm going to put a little more thought into it. And so I need to research it to figure out what I want in my categories and how I want to lay them out before I actually start the book. What I have here is just a composition book and it's just got some categories marked with little tabs, my website information and things like that. I'm working on a website on the side. At least I was. I'm not now because I'm too busy, but at some point I'll be back to my website. And so I keep my information in here. So I'm going to put my swatch book information in here. This is just, like I said, a regular composition book that I painted. I really enjoy using it. So what I would like to ask you guys, have any of you created a swatch book, an actual usable swatch book with a key code and all that kind of stuff? Have you ever done that? And how did you go about it? Did you follow someone's tutorial? Did you just make it up as you go? Because I'm going to kind of make it up as I go. I don't want to follow a tutorial, but I want to know, are there certain things that you really think are important other than product name and color? Do you think light fastness? Do you think staining? Do you think dispersion? All that stuff is really important to have in your swatch book. I'm very curious what you guys think because some of you are probably way more advanced than me and you watch me for just relaxation. I don't know. Some of you may be really a strong watercolorist or really strong acrylic artist or something and you may have a swatch book. I don't, I'm just really curious what you think and what you've done for your swatch book. And if you have categories in mind that you think are really important, tell me in the comments or something. Maybe it'll help me set up my book. Maybe it won't. Maybe it'll be something I've already thought of, but you know, it never hurts to have the input from someone else who does what you do, or maybe does it better than you do. So enough of that. Today, I want an easy day. So I'm going to go back to something I've done before. I'm going to use up some more of my washi tape. When I did that before, I made some bunnies. I've already used this bunny cookie cutter for some bunnies. I might use it again because I don't think I've made a washi tape bunny out of this. I don't think. I'm not sure. But I went through my old cookie cutters that I've got and I pulled out the ones that I wanted to play with to use up some washi tape. And the main one that interested me was this one here. Scotty Dog, I guess is a Scottish Terrier. Most of my cookie cutters that I have are like the big plastic ones. I could go find those and come up with tons of shapes. But I'm going to limit myself today. I don't know. Maybe I'll I'll go get them and look at them and see. But I have a Christmas tree here. I don't know that I'll do a Christmas tree today. And these remind me of my mom because she actually used to use one of these. It has a green handle and I think I have it somewhere. And then I have a heart and then a little bird, a rooster, a little chicken. This is a bear. And this is another bunny. I didn't use this bunny in the bunny project we did because I didn't think the shape was that cute, but I don't know. Maybe he is cute. So we'll give him a try. So I'm going to use these today to make some more washi tape embellishments. And I want to go get my plastic ones because I do want to look through and see if there's any shapes in there that I think it'd be cool to use. And I'm going to use washi tape today. I may switch over to paper if I have time, but probably not because I really want to use up this washi tape. I think the washi tape is a really good idea for these little embellishments because it's using up something I need to use up and it's pretty. Okay, real quick, I went and grabbed my plastic containers that have my plastic cookie cutters and I forgot about these. These are letters and numbers and so I could make my name if I wanted to. And in here, there's different shapes, little tulip, flowers, gingerbread people, pumpkins, all seasons, boats, things like that. This one's got the same thing little houses. What is that? A little award or something you wear? I don't know. Little trucks, things like that. Airplanes. So I don't know. I might look through here and get something to use. 
But I'm gonna start off with the old ones first because that's what interests me the most. I'm going to use this drawing pad. This is the same paper that I use all the time. It's just got a different cover. This is from my grocery store. It's called Heavyweight Drawing Pad. It's by You Create. It's the same paper. It's just light enough weight to do something on and cut out and use for collage. And it's not too heavy. So it's perfect weight for this kind of thing. And I've got my washi tape. And the first one I wanna start off with is this dog because it just intrigues me so much. It's heavy actually. I don't know how I'm gonna trace it though because I've gotta put it down like this. So probably what I'm gonna do is put some paint on a mat, dip it in and then stamp it and then get myself an impression that I can then make a template from. I'm just sharing this with you. So if you have any cookie cutters that you would like to use, that's an idea. You can even stamp this in clay. The first thing I'm gonna try is my Liquitex black gesso. I'm just gonna take a paintbrush and I'm just gonna put a little paint on the edge of this dog and then I'm gonna try and stamp it and see if that works. And this is just the inside of a notebook that I finished up. Heavier cover so I can have a little bit of a heavier template. And then I'll just wipe this off after I'm done. There we go. I'll cut this out and then I'll be able to use him facing either direction. Pulled out a piece of my paper that I told you about, and I'm going to trace my little dog here on the paper. And I'm gonna do front and back, because I want facing both ways. Okay, got my little dogs traced out. I'm gonna cut these down a little bit because I want to have a generalized shape that I need to work within. And I'm gonna put my washi tape on the back. And once the washi tape's down, I'll flip it over and I have my little guide to cut it out. You could just put your washi tape down and then put your little dog on top and cut it out that way. I just wanna do it this way. Got some red and black, got different shades of red, got another design of black, and these are fabric. Now I want to cut out my little shape. Okay, I got my little dog cut out. Look how cute. Oh my goodness, look how cute. I will save these things. I'm gonna do this one off camera because it's the same thing as this one. Okay, I have both of my little dogs cut out and I honestly wish I hadn't used this washi tape up here by their eyes. It almost looks like they've got a blinder or a bandana or something over their eyes. <laughs> but they're still cute. And then I just took a piece of red washi tape and I cut it in half and I gave one of them a little collar and I was testing out some ribbon on the other one and I didn't like anything I had. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here with this one, just give it a little collar. And I did pull out some flowers that I have that I think were pretty. If you don't mind having some bulk on your little dog, you could have a little flower there, that'd be cute. But I don't really want bulk on mine right now, so we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna go with a little red collar. And I'm gonna make a couple more of these with the red and black washi tape because I think they'll be cute. Yeah, I cut out two more and I changed the collar on these guys because I didn't like the red collar, so I like that better. And these two are my favorites. This one's my very favorite. I prefer the dog facing that way, but I screwed up when I traced it out and <laughs> got them backwards. Typical. I also tried it a different way to see if I liked cutting them out differently. I took the pattern, I put it down, and I cut out my little square about the size that I would need. And then I just put washi tape down and then I laid my little template down and cut it out. And I realized why I do it the way I do it now, because I don't like holding the template or taping it down or trying to clip it and trying to go in and out of a piece that I don't want to mess up. So tracing it, I have more control over my paper, I can turn it easier, and I can just weave in and out of the curves. I just like it better that way. And I will use the leftovers for something so they don't go to waste. Okay, so I really wanted a dog facing that way, but oh well. This is just like my dogs, stubborn, they don't listen. <laughs> I'm gonna go on to something else. I am gonna back these, but we'll do that last. I'm dying to try this bunny, so we're gonna try that next. And I have more fabric tape that I'm trying to use up, and it looks like this. 
This is very pretty. So I used all of this except for this piece here. And then these two here are kind of a fabric-y feel. So I'm trying to use those. So I'm gonna make my little template of my bunny. Same way except this one. I don't have to put paint on this one. I can just go ahead and trace this one. I'm gonna cut him a little larger than I traced him. So when I cut him out, I'm gonna cut out around the pencil line a little further out, just so he's a little bit bigger. Okay, I'm just gonna trace out a second bunny. I already traced one, and I put a little note on my bunny that if I trace this side, my bunny will face to the left, which is kind of what I want. And I erased the trace lines on my bunny because they were distracting me. I've got two bunnies ready to be taped, and I'll just do one with you guys. I'm gonna let this dry a little bit so that the purple disappears and then I'll cut it out. I'm gonna do another bunny and then when I come back, I'll show you what they look like. Okay, here's the bunnies. This one's still drying and this one's so cute. I love this one. One other thing I like about tracing out my pattern and putting the tape on the back and then cutting out my pattern is that I can change the shape of the design if I want to. Like for example, this one, I made the ears a little bit bigger. And if I wanted to, I could go straight up and make them even really bigger, which make him really cute. I wish I'd have used this bunny the other day because he is adorable. He just didn't look adorable like this. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna go on to another one. I used up another one of my pads, so I'm just gonna use the top for my paper for my template because it's a little stiffer, so it'll work great. And I think we're gonna do the little chick. I just find these at antique malls. When I go to antique malls, I look around for interesting cookie cutters that I like. There's my rooster, let's go ahead and make him. So I'm gonna finish tracing all these out. You see what I'm doing? Okay, I've got a few shapes ready I'm gonna do. I changed my mind about doing my name because the detail's too intricate. I know there's a little simple cookie cutters, but in order for it to look like a name, I'd have to cut out the little tiny circles and stuff, and I'm not doing that today. I went ahead and I did one more of these bunnies because you know, this is my, my favorite bunny. Actually, you can't see this bunny. I love this bunny, so I'm doing one more for him. Actually, I've never done a washi tape bunny like this one, I don't think. If I have done one, it's been a while and I forgot. So I've got my rooster, I've got a teddy bear, I've got a bunny shape, another bunny shape that I pulled out of the plastic ones. I've got two birds, so I'll do one of those with you guys. Then I've got a fish shape, like this one. This is a moon, another bunny shape, and this one is the chicken. I have a circle, but I doubt I'll do it. I think I'm just gonna do these and that'll be it for the day. So I'm gonna go ahead and just let the camera roll and put my tape on and then I will cut them out and show you what they look like and then we'll put backs on them and that'll be it. Let's do the rabbits first because I really love the rabbits. I could keep making these all day. These are so cute. I really love this teddy bear. I have papers out that I'm gonna put all my embellishments on for backing. So like these are gonna go on the black paper. This is a yellow. And then the whites you see are the backs of the paper I'm gonna be using. I'm just gonna glue all my little characters to the papers. And then I'm gonna just cut it out. And when I get all my little backings on and all cut out, I will show you each one and I will say goodbye. I am done cutting and boy, do I feel it in my hand. I do not like fussy cutting. Have I ever said that before? <laughs> I haven't, I'm saying it now. <laughs> 
I know I've said it before. Okay, let's look at these. Some of these need a little extra trimming because I didn't do a good job, but I'm in a hurry because I don't like vesti cutting, so I just wanted to get it done. This is one I cut by freehand, just a heart that I cut by freehand. So there's the front and back of that one. Here's one of the little bunnies and the other bunny. Some of these are not my favorites, and I actually think I would paint over them or maybe do more to them, I don't know. The rooster, the little bird, and this is the fish, and one of the little dogs. I put the black on back of all the dogs, so I won't turn those over. Those two are cute. The moon, it's got yellow on the back. And the chicken, I love the chicken. I think because I like the black and white or black and off-white. This is a leaf I cut freehand. This is another bunny. I love this guy. I love this bunny too. And I love these two dogs. These are my favorite dogs of the four. And I love this bunny. That's my favorite. <laughs> I love the colors. I love the shape. I just love the bunny. Okay, that's it for today. You can take any shape that you want and make something like this. And you can do them freehand if you want to. And I'm going to go and get this video edited and get it up for you guys. And I will see you tomorrow for day mm, 70. And I hope you have a great whatever it is. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.